Hi, this is Robbie with Tickner Photography. I was walking around outside and a giant hornet uh, followed me through my door into my place. So I caught it and I put it in the fridge overnight. So now I'm going to try and photograph it, get a giant bug head. The hornet is still alive, so hopefully it, uh, the cold will slow it down enough where it won't want to move, but it'll sit there and pose for us. I have my 100mm macro lens and then my three levels of extension tube. So 69mm of extension tube on 100mm macro should get us quite a bit greater than 1 to 1, so almost 1 to 2 magnification. So hopefully we can get this insect head quite large. Because we're doing ultra macro, our depth of field is going to be minuscule, so we'll have to focus stack. So once we get a shot that we like, we'll try and get maybe 10 exposures, just moving ever so slightly closer, and then we'll merge them together in Photoshop and hopefully get something really cool. There's also, I've seen that some people, when they take a picture of a giant bug head, they'll squirt it with a little bit of water so it'll have droplets here and there. So it might do one of each, one with droplets, one without droplets. I'm trying to figure out a setup here that will work. I kind of want a black background or the bug on black. But this is a hornet, it's a meat-eating bee kind of thing. So I might lay a strip of prosciutto that I just had in the fridge uh, down and stick it on top of that. So it'll be a piece of meat with this meat-eating in insect on it. I thought that would kind of be a cool contrast and then maybe solid blacks to the isolated background. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I have a piece of glass that I'm going to set the prosciutto on just so it'll be easier to clean. and. I have it elevated off a little bit. I'm going to use three studio lights. My key light is going to be basically right above the camera pointed at it. Then I have two soft boxes from behind as rim lights. So hopefully that will allow me to isolate this bug. We also have a, a black foam core behind it, a fair distance so that should fade completely to black. So now I have to set this up. I'm going to go get our prosciutto lay it out, make sure it looks okay, and then we'll go get our bug and see what it's looking like. So now we have our prosciutto laid out, and now for our bug. All right, so now we have an insect on there. Let's see if we can show you. So for reference, that's how big it is. It's a really small bug. Uh, we're also using the Sony Alpha A77 for reference. So let's take a couple shots and see what it's looking like. Ooh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be cool. All Now this guy is moving a lot. Whoa. Alright, so I think we might have gotten something. Our bug was moving way too much to actually focus stacking. I tried, just tried to get it in focus even though it was moving quite a bit, try to frame it a little bit. Um, I increased the aperture. We were shooting at about f16, f18 to give us a little bit more depth of field. But we'll see what we get. Let's go take them in a Lightroom. So now we're in the Lightroom and a few of these images turned out really cool. An example. That's badass. And if we zoom in here, you can see the detail that we got, but also how shallow the depth of field is when shooting ultra macro like this. Your depth of field is such a tiny sliver. That's why I wanted to focus stack, but that just didn't work. This is at f18, and our depth of field is microscopic. So let's go look at what we got. Here were a bunch of shots that turned out okay. Go up a little bit better and we can step through some of these. All of these turned out pretty good with focus. As you can see, I had a bunch of sensor spots. Shooting ultra macro like this, such stop-down aperture, you can really see any spot on your sensor. So. So it's probably a good idea to clean some of these beforehand. <laughs> but, and here were my favorite shots from 
this Hornet. I was really happy with how these turned out, even without being able to focus stack. I was amazed that I was able to get something this sharp while this guy was moving around as fast as he was. So let's go and look at the edits that I did for this particular image. So straight from the camera, raw, this is what we look like. We're a little bit underexposed because I moved my aperture. I was had pretty much set it up properly for about f16, but I wanted to increase my depth of field slightly while I was shooting. And I, so I went to f18, but I didn't have time to adjust all my lights. So I'm maybe a third of a stop underexposed. So let's go through and we'll start editing this guy. First, I kind of like to do a medium contrast. Really changes things up quite a bit. And we'll move up a third of a stop. Yeah, that's looking better. And like some contrast, but not a whole ton. And we're going to brighten things up a lot. That's looking OK. Shadows up a ton. And it lights up. And now I like to bring the blacks down some. It adds an extra punch and extra contrast. And then quite a bit of clarity. This will increase the um, mid-tone contrast. But now we're really yellow, which is actually how this guy looks, but it it's just a little bit too yellow for me. So I'm going to pull back on the white balance. Somewhere around there, it, it takes out a bunch of that yellow that was just a little bit too much. And now we'll do some sharpening. I think we're pretty much good to go. So with these, with masking, if you hold down the control button, it shows you a kind of exactly what these sliders are going to mask. Uh, hold down the Alt button, I'm sorry. So something like that is good. I'm going to turn up our detail. Turn up the radius a lot. There we go. And now sharpen the hell out of it. And that really kind of brings out all the little hairs. So now we're pretty much done with this image, except I have to clean up all of our sensor spots, which is easy enough with our spot healing brush, which is a shortcut key on keyboard. And I think I got all those. Turn it off. And there we are. That's a final image that looks pretty good. Go before, after. So yeah, I'm happy with this. I would have liked to do a straight head-on focus stack so you can see the entire antenna through the end of the head completely in focus. And I might still be able to do that one of these days if I can figure out how to get this guy to stand still or I can find a dead version of this same insect. So I hope you found this somewhat useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Also in the description, I'll put a link to this particular image that goes to my 500 picks version of it if you want to go over there and vote or favorite it or something. Thanks. Bye.